Welcome to the End Time Sanctuary Prison Truth Ministries. And we are happy to invite you to listen God's Word this time. The center of our study today is on the praise, the battle over it is written. There was a war in heaven. According to Revelation 12, verse 7, for one of the creatures of God questioned his character, questioned his word, and his government. And according to Ellen White, in this day with God, the enemy of God worked deception in heaven was done in secrecy that the angels of less exalted position suppose that he, that is Lucifer, was the ruler of heaven. And so he deceived one third of the angels and resumed of the newly created earth with the two pairs in the garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, according to Genesis 3, verse 2. But we need to understand that all battles is based or are based on deception. Deception may give us what we want for the present, but it will always take away in the end. And so in the area of knowledge of God, knowing God's word is a bulwark against deception and temptation. You know, Lucifer is a very smart deceiver. In heaven, it was gradual, stealthy, and insidious. We can find it, what happened on planet Earth when Jesus, after his baptism in Jordan, was brought by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness, and then after 40 days and 40 nights, of fasting and prayer, the devil also tempted him. In fact, this temptation is so dangerous because it is the weakest point of Jesus. So the devil came because he thought that Jesus was groggy, dizzy, so hungry because of his physical needs. So, Let's read what, what the, the record said. And after that, when Jesus was, after 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And now the tempter, tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. Let's look at If you are the Son of God, meaning to say, he put an intent to doubt Jesus' identity. And then to command these stones of bread is urgent needs, is physical need. But Jesus says, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed from the mouth of God. So the first temptation, it was about food because Jesus was hungry. He was weak and he really need food for his physical need. But the devil did not succeed because he was off guard, caught off, caught off guard, thinking that Jesus was groggy and so weak. And so Satan studied the answer of Jesus. Because he was repulsed by the, by, by the word of God. It is written, which was quoted in Deuteronomy 8 verse 3. Then the devil took him to the holy city. And sit him on the pinnacle of the temple and said, If you are the son of God, look at again, he repeated the same expression intended to doubt about the identity of who Jesus is. And he said, throw yourself down. Here is another key to understand. It is a dangerous intention to hurt, to destroy, or Jesus would commit suicide. It is written, he shall, because now the devil is using 
it is written. Because the devil says, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you. And Satan omitted the expression to keep you in all ways in verse 11. He quoted that the Psalm 91. In their hands they shall bear you up. So, he inserted his own twisting interpretation. Lest he does your foot against the stone. There is no reason why Jesus should jump. And Jesus said, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And the devil did not immediately leave Jesus. And again, the devil took him on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to them, all these things I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall serve. And the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Matthew 4, verses 2 to 11. Here is the battle over it is written. As we have said, that Ellen White said that, Satan is so expert in quoting scripture. However, he inserted and twist the scripture not to its original intention. So here is the battle over the it is written. For we wrestle not against blood and against flesh, but instrumentalities, principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness, of this age, against the host of wickedness in heavenly places. This is what Paul says in Ephesians 6.12. What do we understand with this verse? It means to say that Satan has a lot of agents scattered throughout the whole world. So meaning to say, actually it's not Satan personally who tempts us. He has a lot of angels, fallen angels, that he was able to tempt and convince to reveal against God's character and government in heaven. As we look at here, if you try to estimate of 7 billion people on planet Earth, and since the book of Revelation means it, he deceived the whole world, he cannot do it personally, but you need the numberless of evil angels that has fallen, that each person, not only one, but hosts of angels, fallen angels, are really trying to disturb us. So this is the battle of it is written. So, since Satan is an expert in quoting scripture, we find it here in the encounter of Jesus, the question is, who controls our mind? The holy angels or evil angels? Let us listen because there is a counsel in the words of Ellen White. Counsels to leaders, ministers, teachers. She said, we should exert all powers of the mind to the study of the scripture. We should task the understanding to comprehend as far as the mortal can, the deep things of God. Great Controversy 599. Meaning to say, all of us who can read the scripture, Ellen White counsel us, exert all the minds, exert all the powers of the mind in the study of scripture. Did we really do that? If the scripture is the only one who can help us. The it is written that we can win the deception. He snare to us while we serve Jesus Christ. Then we should do and listen to exert all the power of the minds to understand the scripture, to understand the deep things of God. In fact, he adds in the Great Controversy 598, it is the first and highest duty of every rational being to learn from Scripture what is truth and then walk in the light and encourage others to follow his example. We should study the Bible diligently, weighing every thought 
and comparing scripture and scripture. So here is the encouragement. We need to understand that studying scripture is not much beneficial when it is not really thorough study of scripture that is surface. Now let's look at again. The works of the Holy Spirit in understanding and interpreting the Bible. There are many examples in the Old Testament where the work of God has been performed by the holy angels. Because on a repeated occasion, God delegated his works or acts of responsibility to the heavenly angels. When, un when properly understood, Neither the Bible nor the spirit of prophecy teaches that God is present everywhere in the universe in person when someone needs him. Let's look at the communication of heaven after man's sin. Ellen White says in Conflict and Courage, page 20, Adam and his innocence was granted communion direct, free, and happy with his maker. So, the communication between God and Adam and Eve before the committed sin was free, direct, and happy. But after his transgression, God could communicate to man only to Christ and his angels. Here is the truth. That the Father did not communicate anymore to human, but everything was delegated to Christ and the holy angels. And she said again in Patrick and Prophets 3.36, Since the sin of our first parents, there has been no direct communication between God the Father and man. The Father has given the world into the hands of Christ, that through his meditorial work, he may redeem man and vindicate the holiness of his law. All communication between heaven and the fallen race had been through Christ. So here is a truth that we need to understand. Because today we, we, we need to look at really how God works according to scripture and according to the spirit of prophecy. For example, let's go to Noah. In Genesis 6, 13 to 21, God warns and he gave his plan to send the flood on earth and Noah should execute what is God's plan. And so Ellen White explained that angel explained the plan to Noah. He sent his angel to Noah to tell him what his purpose in regards to the inhabitants of the world. That the faithful preacher of righteousness declared the message to the inhabitants that 120 years would be the end of their probation. Christ, triumphant, page 39. Meaning to say, God does not come personally because his omnipresence and his omniscience and the purpose why he created this thousand and thousand and thousand and thousands of angels. Probably see we see billions of angels. These are his ministry, ministers, the spirit that would minister the redeemed. So he does not want to, God does not need to come in person because there is communication between the Father and the angels and hosts of angels which really enjoy and delight to follow his command. And so in this sense, we understand. For example, again in Genesis 7.16, that God closed the door of the ark. But Ellen White says, God closed the door, only the entrance and shut Noah in and the ungodly out. He alone could open. However, she said that in story of redemption, page 68. But one thing he says, notwithstanding the sins we had witnessed the bees, the birds, and entering the ark, and the angel of God closing the door, they still continue their sports of rivalry, even making a jest to the signal manifestation of God's power. Pachak and Prophet, page 90. Meaning to say, Yes, it is God's work, but he delegated the angels. That's the work. For example, again, another example, Jericho. In Joshua 6.16, 6, 
God destroyed Jericho. But Ellen White said, But the captain of the Lord of hosts, that is Jesus Christ, himself from heaven, to lead the armies of heaven in the attack of the city. Angels of God laid hold the massive walls and brought them to the ground. Testimonies for the church, volume 3, 264. So here is again, Jesus commanding all the angels that was with him to move down, to roll down all those massive rocks and walls of Jericho. Let's go again to the burial of Moses. Deuteronomy 34, 6 explained that God buried the body of Moses. However, Ellen White, after quoting Deuteronomy 34, explained, But the angel of God buried the body of his faithful servant and watched over the lonely grave. Patrick and Prophets 478, meaning to say, the angel had executed in the light of God's will and plan, and so the work of God has been executed by the holy angels. So we need to understand the modus operandi of God. Okay, because sometimes people just, especially a secular mind, he said, the sickness of the mind is this supernatural influence or just a sickness? Because they said conflict between the right and wrong is the sickness of the mind. But the Bible says, no, there are really supernatural influences in our mind, especially when we study the scriptures. And so, here is the way of God's communication. What is his communication? According to Revelation 1, verses 1 and 2, that in the kingdom of heaven there is administrative order. The Father works through the Son, and the Son operates through the Holy Spirit and carries the works of God through ministrations of angels. So none of the person of the Trinity are present everywhere in person. The angels are waiting for us to cooperate with God is omnipresent through his omniscient. God has an infinite mind. He does not need to be personally present everywhere to know who is taking place, what is taking place everywhere. He remains in active communication with all his creation through the holy angels as ministering spirit. Because according to Psalms 104 verse 4 and Hebrews 1:7. These angels are his ministering spirit who will minister those who will be saved. So again, in Psalms 103, verses 20 and 21, these angels are ministers of his that do his pleasures. These angelic beings are appointed to minister the children of God, have all times access to his presence. Great Controversy 513. Moreover, there are angels that guard God's children on earth and in communication with the Father in heaven. In heavenly places, page 99. Meaning to say, the work of God in understanding and interpreting scripture, most and if not all has been delegated to the works of the holy angels. Please, as, let us look at, for example, one of that is when Jesus was buried. And Mary was perplexed. And God helps people uh, by seeking to understand. And when the angels, so Jesus promises the Holy Spirit to teach us every hour. Okay? And so, we, let us look at what happened to the holy angels who helped. Before we go to that, let's go to Daniel. You know, Daniel, according to Daniel 7.28, he had a vision. Daniel 7, I mean. He was greatly troubled, and he said, My thoughts greatly troubled me. My countenance changed, but I keep the matter in my heart. Daniel 7.28. So the vision of Daniel 8, in fact, he fainted. He was sick for few days. And was astonished by the vision because no one understood Daniel 8, 27. So, in Daniel 7 and Daniel 8 visions, 
It was angel of God. And supposed to be this is the work of the Holy Spirit. But immediately God sent Gabriel. Gabriel whom I had seen in the vision. And he came to tell and give Daniel the skill to understand the vision. That is Daniel 9, 21 to 23. Meaning to say, we need to understand that the holy angels has a great rule in our understanding when we read, we interpret the Bible. In fact, Ellen White says, when we will be, be saved in the kingdom of God, we owe everything to the holy spirit, to the holy angels who watch us all the days of our life because God has commanded them to guard, to protect, to inspire, and to lead us, and even to speak right words. So there is an angelic assistance. For example, Mary and the other women. Okay? The, the, the angel helped them remember Jesus' word, but also to assist in understanding the word. The angel says, remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee? Saying that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified on the third day who will rise again. Luke 24, 6 and 7. Here, angel helps Mary and other women remembering and understanding and interpreting the words that Jesus has spoken to these women. And again, Ellen White is saying, Signs of the Times, September 18, 1893, page 6. If you come to study the scripture in humility, with earnest prayer, angels of God will open you its living realities. Here is the truth that we need to understand. As an Adventist Christian, this is the most neglected. We need to understand that the holy angels, they have a lot of rule in encouraging us, in giving us hope, in giving us more insight when we read and when we interpret the Bible. And so, are they not ministering spirits sent to the poor minister for those inherit salvation? That's Paul asking in Hebrews 1.14. Remember that angel Gabriel assists Zechariah. He says, I am the Gabriel who stands in the presence of God to speak to you and bring you glad tidings. Luke 1.19. And Jesus says about the guardian angel of the small children. I say to you in heaven, the angels always see the face of my father who is in heaven. Matthew 18.10. So angels speak even to Paul when he was, they were meeting meet a um, strong storm or typhoon going to Rome. Meaning to say, the work of angels is so important when we read, we interpret the Bible. And so, here as we look at, is there is also a big challenge as, as we see. Okay? And so, it is the spirit According to Ellen White, when we read the Bible, we need to really come reading the Bible with the presence of God because it is so dangerous to read the Bible because there are two assistants at our side. Let me read here in the Testimonies for Minister and Gospel Workers, page 8. The spirit in which you come to the investigation of the scripture will determine the character of the assistant at your side. Angels from the world of light will be to those who in humility of heart seek for divine guidance. But if the Bible is open with irreverence, with feeling of self-sufficiency, if the heart is filled with prejudice, Satan angel is beside you, and he will sit a plain statement of God's word in a perverted light. So it is a very dangerous when we, we read the scripture, and yet we become irreverent. 
We do not pray. When we open it with a feeling of self-sufficiency, we find something to destroy our enemy. This is not. As a result, according to Spirit of Prophecy, Volume 4, 470, we must come with a humble and teachable spirit to obtain knowledge from the great I am. Otherwise, evil angels will sublime our minds and harden our hearts, and we shall not be impressed by the truth. Here is a solemn message for us. So the evil angel has capable of blinding us. In fact, he said, Satan employs every possible device to prevent men from obtaining knowledge from the Bible. Great Controversy 593. In fact, he says, continues, Satan watches to cut away every impression that would make them wise unto salvation. Page 594. So here is our challenge, my brothers and sisters in Christ. We are living in the end of time. And we are in the border of the kingdom of God. Our enemy is working so much. And yet we are still sleeping so relaxed. We need to look at. We need to follow Jesus in repulsing our enemy. By it is written. That's why Ellen White says, Satan is expert in quoting scripture, placing his own interpretation upon passages by which he hoped to cause us to stumble. We should study the Bible with humility, never losing sight of our dependence upon God. While we must constantly guard against the vices of Satan, we should pray in faith continually, let us not lead into temptation. The Great Controversy 5.30. So here is our challenge. In fact, he said in 5.20 of the Great Controversy, the vague, fanciful interpretation of Scripture and many conflicting theories of religious faith that are found in the Christian world are the work of the great adversary to confuse the mind so that they will not discern the truth. Here is a challenge. They can control our mind if the angels, the holy angels, we will not welcome them to control our mind, the Holy Spirit. Then another power will control our mind. And blinded our minds to confuse, we will not discern what is really the truth. And there are deceptions. This is a warning according to Ellen White. Satan is constantly endeavoring to attract attention to man in the place of God. What is this? Satan leads to look to bishops, to pastors, to professors of theology as their guide instead of searching scripture to learn their duty for themselves. Then, by controlling the minds of this leader, they can influence the multitude according to his will. Great Controversy 559. So, we must really read the scripture. Why we are so busy? Why we spend a lot of time about worldly things that is temporal and we have very least time for the eternal? That's a challenge. That's a deception. In the Great Controversy, page 600, Ellen White says, It is the office of the holy angels to prepare the heart to comprehend God's word. But he cannot, the angel cannot prepare our heart when our mind, when our heart is not prepared. The angel of heaven are moving upon the human minds to arouse investigation of the theme in the Bible. A far greater work will be done has yet to be done, and more for the glory of it, it will flow to men. For angels that ministers, those who shall be ears of salvation, are working day and night. Counsels to writers and editors, page 140. If the angels are working with us day and night, and yet we do not know, this is a challenge. Because the battle is, it is written. If it is the written, the, our, the ultimate 
security and safety that we will not be deceived. Then let's look at the works of God he has done on our planet. Just imagine billions of evil angels. Every person is tempted. But we have also billions and more than that of the holy angels who will impress our mind, understand the truth, understand the Bible, enlighten us, and yet we neglect. Angels of God are to impress the word of God in the mind. But let's look at here. Ellen White says, and the, uh, the, Bible, uh, the Bible indicates in the spirit of prophecy that eh, the devil gets the word. And we find this. People come after church. Oh, what is the preaching? Oh, it was so nice. What is it? I don't know, but we enjoy why is it that after preaching, you lost? You cannot recall the truth that has been presented by the messenger of God. And listen to what Jesus says in Matthew 13, 19. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, because the wicked comes and snatches away what was sown in the heart. Because sometimes we go to church, preaching is to entertain us. Should be, it is nurturing our soul. The wicked comes, it snatches away what was sown in the heart. Then we go home, nothing. What happened in church? Satan himself play a role in human understanding and interpretation of the word of God. Paul asserts. Even if our gospel is built, it is built to those who are perishing. In the world, God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving that they might not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 4, verses 3 and 4. So they blinded our minds. The God of this world build the truth. No matter how we read, Why? Because we are not also insisting on the word of God, the it is written, that we need to see this truth. Listen, my brothers and sisters. Ellen White says in Steps to Christ 110, There is much reading in the Bible that is without profit. In many cases, a positive injury. When the word of God is open without reverence, without prayer, when thoughts and affection are not fixed upon God or in harmony with his will, the mind is clouded with doubt and the very study of the Bible is skepticism is strengthened. The enemy takes control of the thoughts and he suggests interpretations that are not correct. So, the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and save. Luke 8, 12. And so, how can we prevent? The quarrel in the end time is it is written. So, if it is written, if we are not acquainted with scripture, There are many people who are so expert in many things. I know of a person who knows all rocks. But what is the purpose? They, they are good. But if we, I, you do not know, the rock of ages is useless. They study so much on business. But unless you are acquainted with the pearl of great price, we lost. Because what we study and concentrate and give more attention of the power of our mind are earthly and temporal rather than the eternal. The Great Controversy 595, Ellen White has this. Multitudes do not want Bible truth because it interferes with their desire of their sinful, word-loving heart and Satan supplies deception that they love. We come. Sometimes, 
You know, I visited several churches. They said, Pastor, you need to stop at 11.45. I said, why? I just travel. I drive two hours. And then you preach and you start the hour of sermon, hour of worship, 11.30. And then I have studied for 10 hours. Why is it? We lose the graphs of the it is written. Why is it? I repeat that. Why is it? That when we read the Bible, we are so sleepy. But when we look at our television, four or five hours is not enough. This is a personal deception. How many churches have invited me? Pastor, 11.45, stop. I said, no one will go out until I finish my sermon and my message. You can afford to watch TV three to four hours not going to the seer. And when the sermon is only 30 minutes, 45 minutes, you cannot afford means to say, where is our priority? Our priority is no longer heaven. Personal, self-centered, that's our priority. We lost the grips of Jesus' model. It is written. If there is a time in the world that we need to stay on scripture, it is now. The holy angels are to work to enlighten minds, to help us to do right, to strengthen our faith. Angels of lights and power are ever near us to protect, to comfort, to help, to instruct, to inspire. This is what Ellen White says in Truth About Angels, page 19. So, what shall we do? We cannot move our enemies. A host of darkness, principalities and powers, rulers in the heavenly realms. We have no power, even an inch, to move them. What is our security and our surety that when we read the Bible, when we interpret and understand and share it? How did Jesus defeat the enemy? In the it is written. She said, therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee you. James 4, 7. So the first thing to win the battle against the it is written because the enemy also is using it is written, but it is a twist and turn to deceive, to destroy and to hurt us. We submit to God. We resist the devil and he will flee. And according to Proverbs 18, the name of the Lord is the strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. We have a tower of refuge and yet trying to find their own personal tower of refuge which are defenseless and useless in fighting the enemy of God. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. When the righteous run to it, they are safe. And Ellen White says, Satan trembles and flees before the wicked soul who find refuge in that mighty name in heavenly places. 256. My brothers and sisters, my appeal to you is that if there is a time in history of our planet, it's time to give the Bible its proper place and domain in our hearts. Let's read. Let's ask the whole help of heaven because we have mighty angels. And let us put into our mind what Ellen White says that the devil is already a defeated fool, but he does not stop. Even he is defeated because he wants to bring into his side those people who are in the banner, under the banner of Jesus Christ. We are in the battle. If I use the Chinese way of understanding, in our world today, we are fighting 
the young and the yin, the light and darkness. When the power of the light will be the one to take over our whole mind, body, and spirit because we allow God to use us, to receive in us, and to mold us into his will and plan and purpose, then the young, the light, will be the one who will overcome. This is what's happening to us today. Look at this beautiful nature. It's so beautiful but extremely deadly. That's, I can picture in our world. Our world is so beautiful and yet the deception is so deadly. We need to change mind. We need our mind to be healed so that we are attuned to God's voice, to his word. In the end, God is our tower. Our only security and surety not to be deceived is submission to God. My brothers and sisters, now you have understand. Why I was impressed to discuss this one? Reason, because we have an enormous power that will help us understand God's will, plan and purpose, and think of eternal things rather than over what we have done on planet Earth that is temporal. So, it is my prayer and hope. Rejoice together with me, in our study, in the end time sanctuary present truth ministries, open your minds, your hearts, for the messages of God. And I know that God will empower us that we will not be deceived in the powerful delusion and satanic sneer throughout in the world because God is with us and the devil is already a defeated foe and we have Christ who is the victorious in everything because he lived a perfect life and that is a guarantee given to us as a benefit and he died in a perfect death as our sacrifice then our salvation is secured. What we need only is to come to him so that we will not be trapped the snare, the deception, the devices, the methods of the enemy that will destroy our focus on the eternal things in the kingdom of God. God bless you. This is my prayer.